The big problem is, are young people uh, suffering and are they suffering mental health problems on an alarming scale? Well, we've heard a lot in recent years about the crisis in mental health, especially among young people. And obviously that just got much worse with the impact of COVID uh, on young people missing their schooling and being separated from their friends for extended periods of time. One thing I particularly wanted to do with this research was to think about how we could help young people in the present to understand their emotions better. With my colleagues, I set about creating a programme of lessons called Developing Emotions. We look at this wide range of sources, paintings, books of philosophy, science, music, anything we can lay our hands on to help us understand how people felt. The main aim was just to give them this much wider menu of different ways they might divide up and think about the emotional world. We found that teachers and children really enjoyed these lessons. They come with an activity book full of great art and literacy activities and facts and quizzes. Children respond well to anything which is stimulating their curiosity and their creativity. And that's what these lessons do. And teachers found them a, a new and interesting, different way to teach children about emotions. I'm really proud of these lessons that we've made for school children. I think they've really benefited from doing the activities that we've made based on the history of emotions. But I think there's also a broader point, which is that looking back to the past, we can liberate ourselves a bit from what can be quite narrow categories of mental health language today. And we can see that throughout the centuries, human beings have found so many different ways to think about, to experience, and to deal with their feelings.